Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're looking at a knife from CJRB. All right, this one is called the Crag. All right, now this Crag has a very interesting uh, locking mechanism here. A little flipper on the back. So the locking mechanism is called the recoil lock. All right, let's zoom into this a little bit. So basically this is going to lock the back of the blade here, all right? If you look down in the frame, you see the pin that goes across here, all right? As we open it up, the tang, there's a cut in it right there. So this, there's a spring action on it. So the spring is putting pressure against the tang the whole time. And then once it hits that little section where the cutout is, we can see right in there, that shadow, it lines up and it shoots forward. All right, and that's what locks this up. Just kind of a cool lock. Um, you can see it's three-sided here, so once it's locked open, you could use your thumb on the back here to unlock it. Uh, you can use either side, your thumb, pulling down. So if you want to do this one-handed, you want to flick it open and then kind of use it like an access lock or something. Uh, you can certainly do that. You can do it on the back side. You can do it on both sides as well. If you want a little bit more grip, just hold both sides and that'll shut. Just pretty cool. The recoil lock, I, I definitely dig it. Now before we even get into this knife, I want to talk about CJRB. What is CJRB? This is essentially the economy line of knives from Artisan Cutlery. All right, so if you're not familiar, Artisan Cutlery being a Chinese company, they make some higher end knives. This is their subdivision. This is basically their Civivi to We, their Bird to Spyderco. Does that make sense? So if you're not familiar, Spyderco, well, I mean, very well known knife company, right? They have their budget line of knives, but instead of calling them Spyderco, they have a whole different branding for it, the Bird. B-Y-R-D, right? <clears throat> we Knives, very high-end um, Chinese cutlery, they have their, you know, budget line, Civivi. And Artisan Cutlery has their budget line as well, which is C-J-R-B. Now, I only recently found out what C-J-R-B stands for. The C in it stands for China. The J-R is actually a Chinese pinion abbreviation um, for Artisan and the B stands for blade. So it's Chinese Artisan Blade. Hopefully that makes some sense and answers some questions because I've actually got questions about that before in the past. So there you go, hopefully that answers some questions. I have had people send messages before asking about this branding. Uh, I knew that it was uh, a subdivision of Artisan but only recently found out what it actually stands for. But there you go, there's the box. Here's the specific version of this uh, Crag, C-R-A-G. All right, so there's a the model number. There's a bunch of different you know, colorations and stuff on a lot of these different uh, companies' knives. So I think there's like four different colors. This one has that beautiful kind of grayish blue type uh, G10 on it. All right, so as far as specs on this guy, uh, the blade is D2. We have three and a half inches of D2 here. It is flat grounds and it does have a slight stone wash finish on it. Might be hard to tell. Um, closed 4.75 inches and again we have G10. You can see there are metal liners on here. All right, little flipper on the back. Overall weighs 4.8 ounces. So here's a close up of the flipper as well as the lock again, but the flipper I wanted to focus on, it works very well. There's no jimping or anything, but there's a nice flat spot on there. All right, so it does flip open very easily. Uh, what is nice too is because of the shape of the tang on the inside, which obviously you can't see here, but it allows this to retain the blade in. So as you pull the blade out, it wants to pull the lock down, if that makes sense. So keep an eye on the lock as I pull the blade. You're, you're pulling against that spring tension, all right? So it does not want to open, you know, it basically retains that without having to have a, uh, a detent and a bearing on there, which is kind of interesting. It's just part of the design. Once you get to a certain point, though, it releases, okay? That spring tension is no longer uh, being, you know, or holding that blade shut. Then it just will freely move, and then, of course, in the open and lock position. So the recoil lock there is quite fascinating. Uh, this does have a lanyard hole on it, all right? You can also see the pocket clip here is deep conceal. All right, nice tension. It's actually, um, I don't wanna say loose, that's the wrong word, but it's it's light to pull away, all right? Sometimes pocket clips are super tight, but if you have some thicker pants, it's no problem at all. You can see there's a, a flow through design there, a couple of standoffs. And if you notice, there is some screw holes there, so you can swap this. This right now is set up from factory, tip up right side carry, but you can swap it to tip up left side carry, which is nice. Um, opening the knife, looking in down in there, hopefully you can see that, but there is holes in the liners, I right, drilled through, so it does lighten up the, uh, the weight a little bit on this guy. Um, being just under five ounces, I don't feel like it's, you know, particularly heavy or particularly light, just kind of right there in the middle. 
But uh, but yeah, it's kind of fidget friendly, you know, flipping it open, you can use pointer finger to shut that. All right, so really, if you practice with it a lot, you can use just your pointer finger for both opening and closing. All right, it's just a timing issue as far as closing. All right, so let's try this again. Actually, let me try it without any wrist. So flick it open and let gravity flip it open, let gravity fall. All right, so you can actually <laughs> manipulate this with just that pointer finger. However, I didn't do that naturally. Naturally, grabbing the knife, I would flick it open, and then because I'm changing my grip to use it, when I'm done, either I use two hands, use the thumb very easily to just, you know, get that off kilter there and to close it, or in more cases, I would use the side here. So I'd use my thumb on the side to close it. This is what I was naturally doing, opening it, using it, cutting it, and then using the thumb to, uh, to drop that closed. So yeah, the uh, CJRB Crag, I think it's really cool. Uh, it is comfortable as far as our ergonomics go. Um, there's no real hot spots except for the clip does poke a little bit. I wouldn't call it an actual hot spot because it's not like really irritated from, from heavy use, but you can feel it there. All right, just to, again, with deep concealed clips, it's total luck whether it lands in the right spot or not. But I did find that with a little bit heavier uh, cardboard cutting, it just kind of rubbed a little bit. It didn't get really red or irritated, but I definitely knew it was there rubbing. Um, but yeah, basically large finger troll here, and then just a very slight curvature. It does kick out at the end here. It might be hard to see with the design, uh, but your other three fingers just rest on that space right there. Because we have this uh, recoil lock, uh, I don't know if you'd call that a button, mechanism, whatever, uh, there is a little bit of jimping on there. Obviously, you don't want to pull back, so when you rest your thumb on here, you want to rest it on this side of the shelf. Let me zoom in to show you that. So you can see we have a little bit of a peak here. So if you rest your thumb on the top, that's bad news, because in struggling and cutting things, you might pull back on it, which obviously would release it. So I'd recommend, I'd really recommend just staying away from it and having a natural grip like this wrapped around. But if you have to put your thumb up top, which I did quite frequently when I was cutting things, um, I use this almost like a thumb rest, okay? So it's like a, my thumb, you know, went against the back side of it here. I never had to actually, you know, put my thumb on top or even, you know, towards the, uh, the very tip there. It was always behind this little incline here. All right, so it is comfortable to use your thumb like that and push against it. And if anything, you're pushing the lock, you know, more locked, if that makes sense. But yeah, as far as ergonomics, it's, uh, it's a, you know, kind of middle of the road. It's comfortable, it's no big deal. It's not particularly extra comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable at all. Um, as far as the, uh, the D2 on here, totally adequate. Definitely run of the mill D2. It's not the best D2 I've ever had. It's not the worst. Just kind of right there in the middle. There's so many different companies offering D2 for a blade steel. Uh, it is a tool steel. It works totally fine. I had no issues with this one, uh, specifically, you know, rusting or anything like that. You know, I do have some some glue and scratches and stuff here and there, but you know, it is what it is. I didn't clean this one up before the uh, the video. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. This I, I was specifically interested in this one for the uh, recoil lock. I really just wanted to try that. Uh, I did get two other models. I got the uh, Caldera, I think it's called, and the uh, Feldspar uh, from. Um, CJRB and I'm gonna do a separate video on those two I'm not sure if I'm gonna do them together as like a double feature or not because I, I am done with both those knives and ready to do a, a video on them we'll see either I'll do them individually you know or I'll just slap them together and just do kind of a, a double feature since they're both in the same brand and I, I happen to use them at the same time but this one I did want to do separately just because of this specific locking mechanism but also to kind of explain that name a little bit so if you didn't know now you do so overall, I can't really complain. Again, this is a budget knife, less than $40, and it's got a pretty interesting uh, mechanism on there. It's comfortable, it's easy to use, it's sharp, D2. So I really have no complaints. It just doesn't particularly stand out as being amazing. I do really like the lock mechanism. I think it's kind of cool. You guys know I've always uh, enjoyed innovation. Um, as far as the, uh, the lockup on here, I would say it's like 99.9% locked up. There's just the tiniest bit of play in it. And uh, this is from hard use. When I first got this, uh, there was no play at all. But now when I lock it up, no matter how hard it locks or how soft it locks, there's just the, the tiniest, tiniest bit of wiggle in there. You know, definitely unnoticeable when you're just cutting things. But, you know, when you do these different like lock tests and you're literally gripping down hard on the blade and hard on the handle and you're really trying to move it around, then you can feel that tiny, tiny little bit. Um, but hey, I thought it was uh, worth mentioning there. So I'm not sure if something loosened up a little bit just from usage um, or maybe just uh, from using the knife, opening and closing in a bunch. Um, you know, 
parts kind of set together. I might play around with the pivot a little bit just to see if I can get it out. It seems more, it's hard to tell because it's so little. It's not distinctively side to side or up and down. So I have to kind of play around with that uh, pivot, see if I can get the, uh, the play out. But it is very minimal, but it's still there. So of course I have to mention it. But that's all, this is a pretty interesting knife. Let me know down in the comment section if you have this one. These are available on, of course, Amazon, but it was nice to see that the uh, CJRB line, at least uh, a bunch of the models are also available on Blade HQ, which is one of my bigger go-to uh, dealers. So anyway, that's all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.